Ah, remember the good old days where we could follow every anime being released? I don't! You thought you didn't have enough time to follow fall 2022 anime? Well, introducing winter 2023, where we've added an extra 12 shows on top of how many fall had. So that's an extra full season of anime per week. We've got a whole 54 new anime this season, so I'm sure we got some quality stuff, right? Let's see, we got more isekai, a lot of... Isekai, Spy X, Dream Daddy, Ghost Thirst Over Man's Best Friend. Nier Automata. Okay, now we're talking. Nier has one of the most hard-hitting stories in the history of video games. An incredible, profound, introspective tale exploring philosophy, consciousness that will make you question the meaning of life itself. Let's see how Nier fans are appreciating this incredible story. This fucking video is so cool. It looks like he's actually in a video game. I grew up playing uh, Dave Mira and riding bikes, and this looks exactly like the, the game did, and it's saying he managed to like sync it up so perfectly and it just i don't know how he like the accuracy of the it's it's perfect i don't What's your favorite pop tart? Obviously, it's the strawberry one. But there's that's such a basic fucking bitch answer. All right, you want a real answer, Joey? Yes. The 2002 tie-in merch pop tarts that came out for the Spider-Man movie. What, if you are, wanna... what are you saying? To you know, sometimes all you need in a show is some dumb, bloody fun. And this show about a group of betrayed samurai taking revenge on their revengees called Revengers seems to be exactly that. Gen the Butcher Urobuchi is back, baby. We got the blood. We got the action. We got the violence. We don't got Tokyo in the name. That's probably why more people aren't watching this. If you like your anime with a spice of revenge on the side, just look at how hard this guy gets revenged. Revenge. <laughs> God damn, that guy did some revenging. There's a lot of anime to get through this season, and I want a browser that gives me the optimal anime viewing experience, which is why today's sponsor is Opera GX. Are you a true gamer? Don't answer that. Then Opera GX is the only web browser you should be using. What's a gamer's worst enemy? No, not gacha. Lag and choppy frame rates. And gacha. GX Control lets you enhance your gameplay's performance on PC while your browser is still open and gets rid of lag caused by gaming while listening to music. It's perfect when you're a filthy tab hoarder like me and want to keep a bunch of tabs open without your browser hurting your gaming performance. Not only that, but you can say goodbye to the plain looking browsers you're used to. For all you dark mode lovers, <clears throat> the accents in Opera Opera GX are inspired by neon lights and how they break the darkness of the night. But if you're a degenerate like me and prefer the light, you can still choose from many different special themes, wallpapers, and colors. Not enough for you gamers? Just click the little controller icon in the top left corner to go to the GX corner, which keeps you up to date with all the latest and greatest in free gaming, the best deals, new releases, and breaking gaming news. And would you look at that? If you use the link in the description, the GX corner comes with an exclusive feature that lets you see all the latest videos from the Anime Zone himself. So so, what are you waiting for? Use the link in the description to download the Opera GX browser for absolutely free. Thank you very much to Opera GX for sponsoring us today, and back to the video. At this point, I'm just convinced some isekai are AI generated, because there is no way the reincarnation of the strongest exorcist in another world isn't a title written by ChatGPT. Black hair, overpowered protag, a harem, that fucking scene where they go to magic school and everyone's surprised the main character can do magic without any incantation. This has it all, or wait, are we missing something? <laughs> And there it is! Can't have a good Easter guy without a bit of slavery! <laughs> Just... Why is this a trope? When did this become a staple of isekai anime? I swear to god, if I see one more anime with slavery- Ooh, slavery! Now this is the good shit. Vinland Saga is back with Studio Mappa this time, on their way to collecting every single anime franchise to ever exist. They seem to be doing an excellent job taking the mantle from Studio Wit once again. This looks like it's truly gonna do justice to the legendary source material. Stardew Valley. Alright, we also got... Fuck. How many more sequels do we have here? Tokyo Revengers 2, Nagatoro's Second Attack, Bungo Stray Dogs 4, Rising of the Shield Lolly 2, Inspector 2, Danmachi 4. I think there are more sequels in this one season than all the anime in some older seasons, but all that doesn't matter because Anos the Giga Chad Vordigold has returned to take his crown once more. Oh, I don't know. He doesn't seem that different from every Isekai protagonist. Oh, I'm sorry. How many other anime protagonists do you know that's won a war, had his first kiss, killed a guy with a heartbeat, got his own harem, is the strongest in the world, had 10 10,000 kids. 
when he was one month old. Well, looks like we got some fairy slaves this time. <laughs> Gentlemen and ladies, are we not all tired of slavery in our fantasy anime? Yeah. Do we not all agree? Slavery is bad? Yeah. Well, have no fear. I shall put a stop to this endless cycle of slavery. And how are you gonna do that? With more slavery. Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, it looks like we got ourselves a cute little shoujo about a girl and a slave. I mean, <clears throat> worker fairy. That's what they called in the show. That's totally different. She's innocent. Just look at her innocently buying this fairy in a market that traffics fairies. Such a bargain. I'm proper nice as well. Honestly, though, that aside, it's good to see more shoujo anime coming out now. And this looks gorgeous. I'm loving the watercolor style background and character designs. If you want one of the many OG-starved shoujo fans in the modern day, this might be one for you. Man arrested on suspicion of murder. My bros, it's starting. The era of tomboys is upon us. Short hair? Check. Cute fangs? Check. Muscles? Check. Neuron activation? Double check. If any man here wishes to join our church of tomboys today, you need just utter the holy phrase. Love the kind of woman that can kick my ass. Girls, if you think the worst thing he can say is no, we got Tomo-chan is a girl. A tomboy so friendly, so completely overpowering. She gets bro-zoned. This looks pretty cute, actually. You could have just said this was Tomboy Nazaki-kun, and that's all you needed to say, baby. <laughs> we got assassination classroom, except the girls try to become spies in an organization based entirely around cute anime girls. I like to call this aesthetic. Wait, this isn't a gacha game adaptation? You know, after Licorice Recall, I'm getting a bit concerned now about just how many nations have decided to put their entire national security on the back of adorable anime girls. When Kaguya Summer first aired, it asked the question, what happens if two tsundere's like like each other. But now, the ice guy and his cool female colleague asks, what happens if two kudere's like each other? And I think I have the answer. Black holes with the mass of our sun will take 10,000 billion 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 years to evaporate. 0.0001% of its mass. Meaning, black holes will be around for more years after the last star has died than there are atoms in the observable universe. They will be the oldest thing left in the dying universe. Only second to these two getting a step closer to confessing. Jumping straight off the Spy X family hype train, we have Buddy Daddy showing what would happen if John Wick had a bring your daughter to work day. This is kind of like Spy X family, except Anya's parents aren't casually bringing her along while they murder groups of people or assassinating her biological dad right in front of her. This is a family friendly show, right? Ignoring this four year old's incoming repressed trauma, this one's pretty cute actually. And a lot of that is down to how good of a job they're doing at portraying this kid. Mike, what's that? I think they did an even better job than Anya making her feel like a kid. Forget your perfectly crafted birth rate fixing anime daughters. This is the real deal because sometimes she's just an annoying little shit, ain't she? I want to apologize. Now, this is one I was most excited about, Trigun Stampede. If you got into anime in the same generation I did, Trigun was probably one of the first anime you watched, so I couldn't be more excited to see this reimagining from Studio Orange. You got a sci-fi desert setting of Dune meets Clint Eastwood, some good old-fashioned spaghetti western action, Vash is just as goofy and charismatic as ever. For all the radical changes they've made compared to the originals, I've enjoyed the first few episodes immensely. Now let's talk about 3D. Once again, Studio Orange is proving why they are the king of 3D anime. You can say you don't dig the style, but you can't say that this is a badly animated show. The insane dynamic action shots, the character animations, and little micro expressions they have. Nothing feels rigid or stiff. For a 3D show, this looks more expressive than most 2D anime. On a purely visual front, Studio Orange have upped their game once again, continuing to break all preconceptions about CGI anime. My only concern is if this style will be able to capture the darker sides of the story if it is even remotely following what came before. Oh, I recognize that city from anywhere. This is a fantasy anime. Let's see what's going on in this fantasy world. We got a group of fantasy misfits that have been thrown out of their original groups to band together to create an outcast group. And I don't know why I find this so amusing, but the main protagonist's name is Nick. Yes, Nick. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. And here we have the Hall of Fame of the most iconic anime characters of all time. Goku, Naruto, Saitama. 
Fucking Nick, innit? If you ever think you're fading in romance in life, remember this guy just snagged the prettiest girl in class who shows up at his door, cleans his room, takes care of him, and cooks him the perfect meals every day, and all he had to do was... Give her an umbrella. That's it! It should have been me, not him! That was just a joke though. See, that's not me. I'm in a happy relationship and this is way too pure and wholesome for my tastes. Just look at how innocently she takes care of him and cooks for him and cleans for him. Disgusting. This relationship is so wholesome. No guy would ever want that in their own lives. Okay, Sydney, you can put the gun away now. Oh, here we go. Another show in the teasing genre. Now we're talking. That last show was way too pure. I've seen enough Nagatoro to know where this is going. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is just more wholesome! Is there absolutely no horny this season? Come on, it must be somewhere. <laughs> oh boy, it's time for the era of 2B horniness to enter the anime community. Nier Automata is one of the most beloved action JRPGs of modern time, so a lot of fans will be watching this closely with judging eyes, and so far, it's pretty good. The action looks decent, they are doing my gal 2B justice in every department, the CG even looks really good. For a PS2 game, it seems like this is on course for a decent adaptation so far. But... But... Nier has one of the most profound and amazing video game experiences of all time, but part of the reason it works is because the creator is a fucking madman. So much of Nier's insane experience is tied to the crazy way Yoko Taro decided to integrate it into the gameplay. You complete the game, he forces you to replay it not once, but twice to get the full story. It has 26 possible endings. Some of the shit in here is even out there for a lot of gamers, so I'm not sure how well the Nier Automata experience can be translated to a TV series. But either way, I'll be very curious to see how they continue to adapt- Oh. Oh, this must be that secret anime original ending. Two years ago, Studio Bind blasted onto the scene with Mushoku Tensei, and this season they are back with Oshimai, which is unironically, and perhaps a bit worryingly, one of the best animated shows this season. I'll be honest, I've heard from manga readers this is meant to be an innocent, wholesome show, but there is some sussy wussy anime bullshit going on in the background here. Because at the end of the day, it's about an unemployed degenerate man who wakes up one day to find himself as a cute young anime girl. Yes, that's right. They've made a story about a Discord mod turning into his own profile picture. Ah, it should have been me, not him! The creator of Kakiguri is back and they just can't seem to get away from the casino setting, can they? My man's out here casually getting a royal flush which has a 0.000154% chance of happening, or as the gacha gamer would call it, rather good odds. This looks like a dopey fun action series where everyone has a different bullshit power depending on whatever playing card they have. You got this girl, who has the power of Thai food. <laughs> then Americans be like, this is looking like it could be a lot of fun, but I think more people will be watching it if they just went ahead and called this card cap to Jojo. Alright, where's all the East guy this season? Did someone say he's a guy? Nah, I think this is a normal fantasy. Finally, a fantasy anime that goes, we don't need to copy every other fantasy isekai world to ever be made. Let's copy Attack on Titan instead. I kid, I kid. This is more Monster Hunter than it is Attack on Titan. I'm always excited to see promising anime original projects, and this one has yet to fully show its cards, so I'm definitely going to be keeping a close eye on this. If not only to keep track of how they handle the relationship between the main duo of this older guy and the younger looking teenage girl. Oh my god! What is this? This is one time. Bye, bitch! Now here's an isekai concept I can get behind. What's the best way to save up for early retirement? Just embezzle your money to another world. You know, we've had enough morally correct power fantasy protagonists. I'm glad there's finally a girl who's showing us what isekai was always meant to be about. Escaping the IRS. Holy Jesus, how many more isekai or fantasy shows do we have this season? We got an actual farming isekai this time where they do real farming instead of killing dragons with carrots or whatever the hell this is. I know you think you've seen every ridiculous isekai power up imaginable, but campfire cooking in another world with my absurd skill has introduced possibly the most overpowered ability an isekai protagonist has ever acquired. Amazon Prime. Chilling in my 30s after getting fired from the Demon King's army? Finally, an isekai protagonist with a worthless power I can relate to. Being 30. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
there's yet another fantasy about an Otome game villainess. To his credit, this one has a pretty unique premise. Instead of a girl getting isekai'd into an Otome game, the in-game characters can actually hear their player's let's play commentary as the voice of God. We finally got lock-picking lawyer in another world. Dude gets isekai'd just to find himself opening chests for his party. Reborn to the Master of Blade, from Hero King to Extraordinary Squire, looks alright actually. It's always refreshing to see dragons that not only aren't CG, but looks good. And I can say that about the rest of this show as well. It looks way better than it has any right to be, but with so many isekai and fantasy shows airing this season, I might actually have to be selective with which shows I watch, which is why if I had to put all my chips into one isekai pick this season, it would probably be this. The magical revolution of the reincarnated princess and young genius lady may sound like a title designed to give your brain an aneurysm, but it's a show that instantly charms you into its world and characters. It's one of those shows that actually tries to tell a classic fantasy story over doing bullshit isekai stuff, and a lot of this is down to the protagonist being an absolute force of nature. I am convinced she's the reincarnation of Chisato in a fantasy world because she takes over any scene with her infectious energy. But I know, I know, there's a lot of isekai this season. What is this show doing that's more special than every other isekai airing right now? Gay girls, isn't it? Yep. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much this month too. Alpha Sigma, Author Curtis Eckstein, Basil, Dysfunctional Degenerate, Flabberwocky, Ivido, Lavados, Misaka12315, Pain Patchett, Pony Stark, Watergeist VT, and everyone else, my Patreon, for helping to support me for this month and making this video possible. So sorry this winter video is a bit late. I put all my resources into making the best of anime 2020 too. And once I finished with that, I just found how many new shows I had to end up watching. So I am really hoping this trend of adding more new anime every season kind of ends because this season had a ridiculous number of shows. I had a hard time keeping up with anime before so if every season this year has as many shows as this season did it's gonna be nigh on impossible to keep up man. Shout out to those people still trying to watch as many shows as possible because my plan to watch list on Mao is just growing more and more every year and I don't know if I can ever catch up but that's it from me today. I don't have many updates to tell you guys so I'm just going to leave it at that. I've been Giguk, and I'll see you all next time.